Hello, welcome to another episode of This, That, and The Other. And I found another um, ad about selling Christmas cards from another company called Junior Sales Club of America out of Springfield, Massachusetts. Win prizes or get cash. Winning great prizes is easy at JSCA Way. Enroll now as a member of the Junior Sales Club of America. We'll send you a free prize catalog, membership card, full selling information, plus your first order of 12 boxes of elegant all-occasion greeting cards or sensational new Christmas cards. As each order is sold, you may reorder additional cards until you've met your prize requirement. Cards are sent on credit. You pay nothing in advance. That's interesting. They were, they were using the, um, was it the honor system? or um, I guess, no, sent on credit. Okay, you have to pay for them later, I guess. Each box of 21 fine quality greeting cards is just $2. That's less than 10 cents a card. Think of all the people you know, relatives, friends, neighbors, who will want to buy these handsome cards by the box. Many JSCA members have earned a prize in only a few hours. If you wish, you may take your prize at 70 cents for each box you sell. Just fill out the mail and mail the coupon reply card to receive your first order of greeting cards. You, must, you may take up to 30 days to sell them. If after that you keep, you have any boxes on sold, promptly return them to them prepaid for by parcel post, keeping 70 cents for each box you've sold. Get the prizes you want the fast, easy JSCA way. Act now. Mail your postage paid reply card now. And this is the order order blank right here. And this lists the various prizes. You see Junior Sales Club of America and all kinds of various prizes. Gonna give you another close, closer look on them. Let's see what various prizes they have. They, I think the biggest thing they have is a bicycle, I believe. Yeah, it's on the, that's on the bottom. You got a chemistry set, baseball glove, tennis racket, fishing gear, race car set, watch radio, tent, all kinds of various things. A little um, history I found on Junior Sales Club of America off the internet. If you happen to pick up a comic book from the 1950s, you may have come across an advertisement for the Junior Sales Club of America. JSCA was a family-owned greeting card company that promotes its products by in incentivizing kids to sell box assortments of cards in exchange for money and prizes. A young entrepreneur who sold enough cards could win exciting prizes like a compass, a camp stove, or even an air rifle. With a business model that embodied the American dream, JSCA became a symbol of bygone era. However, behind the scenes of Junior Sales Club of America's cheerful ads, there was a conflict, division, and bitter legal battle. The story of this closely held family business unfolds in a 1982 Massachusetts appeals court named O'Hara versus Robbins in the name of family and friends. 1953, the Robbins family starred Sunshine Art Studios, a company that manufactures and sold greeting cards. Willard S. Robbins held 50% of the shares. His wife, Grace B. Robbins, held 10% and her son, Ryland D. Robbins, held the remaining 40%. Ryland's college classmate and friend, Arthur P. O'Hara, worked for Sunshine in charge of promotions and sales. In 1954, Arthur proposed a novel business model by which the company would give prize and money incentives to young people to sell Sunshine greeting cards. The model was implemented under the name of Junior Sales Club of America. After JSCA, JSCA was incorporated, Arthur was given a certificate of 20% of the shares, and Ryland and Williard each kept 40% of the ownership of the company. Although he never invested in JSCA or negotiated for the shares, Arthur's salary reflected 20% of JSCA's profits. A shareholder left out in the cold. Two years after proposing the novel sales incentive program, Arthur proposed another program that would essentially would operate essentially the same as JSCA, but would offer better incentives for sailors and sponsors. Arthur's new business idea became reality when he and his business partners started a new company, Sales Leadership Group, Incorporated Sales Leadership. Unfortunately for Arthur, however, a partnership tax return filed in 1958 named Oling Willard the father and Ryland the son's partners. Then in 1959, Arthur was told that he did not have 
not own interest in sales leadership. Nevertheless, Arthur was paid a percentage of the profits for the next three years. Further money from JSCA was part used in part to fund the expenses of sales leadership. Arthur continued to work for us Sunshine until 1965 when he resigned from the Robbins companies over an unrelated dispute. Arthur asked for shares in sales leadership after he resigned from the company, but Robbins family refused. Arthur sued his business partner seeking injunctive relief and damages. The trial judge found that the sales leadership model was a corporate opportunity that should have been reserved for JSCA by diverting businesses to, business to a competing operation i.e. sales leadership. The Robbins family failed to honor the fiduciary obligations to JSCA and to Arthur as a minority shareholder. The trial court ruled in Arthur's favor and ordered the Robbins to transfer 20% of the shares of sales leadership directly to Arthur. The trial court's decision was upheld on appeal. Let's see. Let's see what else I can find on here. Shareholders' duties in a close corporation. Shareholder disputes in close corporations can take many forms, and the type of dispute that landed the co-owners of the Junior Sales Club of America in a courtroom is quite common. Tensions often develop between majority and minority owner interests. The, the specific conflict in this case that drove a wedge between business partners was a father and son's breach of the corporate opportunity doctrine. The, corp the corporate opportunity doctrine, doctrine states for the legal principle that directors, officers, and minority shareholders, majority shareholders, may not usurp a beneficial business opportunity without first presenting it to the corporation. To determine whether a corporation, corporate opportunity exists, the, the courts will often ask whether the opportunity was within the company's line of business, whether the company was financially able to take advantage of the opportunity at the time of appropriation, whether the company had an interest or expectancy in the opportunity, and whether taking an opportunity would create a conflict of interest or breach of other fiduciary Disputes, duties, I mean. I'm going to scroll down and finish this up. The corporate opportunity doctrine stems from the fiduciary duty of loyalty, which generally prohibits directors, officers, and shareholders from stealing assets, self-dealing, engaging in insider trading, and otherwise advanced, advancing personal interests to the detriment of the corporation. Owners, officers, and directors also have the duty of care, the obligation to exercise reasonable care when making decisions on behalf of the corporation, although some instances of misconduct, embezzlement, etc. are obvious, other situations are not as clear. This may be the case, for example, when the opportunity involves business that is related but not identical to the business of the corp corporation. With years of experience representing partners, owners, and family members in a variety of corporate disputes, Russell Beck, Stephen Ryden, and Walt Haddad provide thoughtful guidance to business owners involved in shareholder disputes. So basically, that's what what happened with this with this company, Junior Sales Club of America. I didn't really find any information on whether it's still in business or not, but. That's another one of the things they have in this comic book. This this comic book has like three or four advertisements, as a matter of fact, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look closer look at the others as well and try to get some background information on them. And as always, like, subscribe, share, looking for a partner. As always, thanks for watching.